this kingdom mine, with my blood I've paid, to guard against all who oppose her. That's an interesting song. Where did you learn it from? Oh, I just heard it in a far, far away place. It's quite popular there. I'd much like to hear it performed at the Caddis Tale Inn. Perhaps you could arrange that. Maybe I can, my friend. Maybe I can. Hey, folks, it's Kikoskia here, and welcome back to Let's Play Quest for Crondor Betrayal at Shapir. And wait, last! Wait, did I get that wrong? I think I did. Welcome back to Let's Play Quest for Glory 2 VGA. That's better. I don't know why I said the previous one. Hmm. Must have a different game on the brain. And wait, last! We left off. We're haggling. Ah, oh, that's why I have a different game on the brain. Because we're raising our communication skill, which in another game would be known as our haggling skill. And how do we do that? Well, we pop in and out of the apothecary, say hello, have him pretend that he didn't notice us come in, and negotiate their prices down as far down as they can go. And then we leave, and we come back and do exactly the same thing. Doing this gives us experience in communication. The more times we do it, the more experience we'll get. And eventually, we will get to 200 communication. Once we get there, we literally don't have any more skills that we can train up. The only thing we could improve is our intelligence. And that will be done very slowly and passively as we gain other skills. But we won't be gaining any other skills because we're at maximum. We, don't, we won't have any reason to do any fighting. We won't be dodging or blocking. I imagine our intelligence will always lag behind everything else, but still be pretty impressive. After all, you do need a little bit of smarts to fight well, but Derek is showing you exactly how much smarts you need. Just as a serious note, don't listen to Derek here. You need to employ your brain as much as your sword arm if you want to be a competent fighter. In fact, learning and Discovering new things is always good. Broadening your knowledge. I wholeheartedly encourage you to do it. Technically, Derek is doing that right here by getting loads and loads of experience in communication. Learning how better to interact with people. To haggle, to negotiate, to bargain. This might save us some money. Not that we need to save any money because we have hundreds and hundreds of dinars. We are not going to be spending many of them anytime soon. I think the uh, indication that we've gained a lot of skill points will come when we have the health pills down to seven dinars apiece. That'll be a good milestone. How long will that take? I don't know. You've also got to be careful that you don't accidentally buy more things. Got to be careful. Wait until the text bar gets a bit bigger, and then move on to something else. And when you're done with that, leave. And pop right back in! Oh no, not again, please. I need to work. I really need to work. I know you give me a lot of business, and I appreciate that, but there are other people in the city, you know, Derek. Other people that need my remedies and pills. That may be true, good sir, but I need that communication experience. I need all that communication experience. All that you can give me. Twelve there. Slow this down to four. Nine, eh? And we'll lower this down to five. Sixteen. Okay, so our communication now is it 137? It's getting quite a bit higher. Uh, we've barely been doing this, for the record. It is mid-morning now, on day six. We've only spent the very beginnings of the day practicing our communication. And we're going to be spending a lot more of today doing it. In fact, there's a good chance we might spend the entire day doing this. Well, until it gets dark. When it gets dark, and everywhere closes, we won't be able to do this. At all. Now, you could practice by talking to the guard constantly, by the Saurus pen. 
but I don't think you'll be gaining anywhere near as much experience. Nine there. Okay, has this gone down? 17, 16. See, just doing that doesn't get us any points, but we're getting that much closer. And thus, just like Owen and James and Gorath, we will pop back into this building after leaving and negotiate down everything all over again. Ah, the little curious foibles and quirks of a game engine that the developers absolutely did not anticipate. Let's be pretty blunt here. The developers of Crondor, the developers of Quest for Glory 2, did not know that this would be something that people would be able to do. At least I don't think they did. Imagine if they were like, yeah, this is exactly what people will do to raise their communication. They probably thought, oh, well, they'll just walk around and talk to people, and slowly over time, communication will go up. They'll never max it unless they absolutely focus on talking to people, but then they won't be raising their other skills. And then people came along and went, well, how can we maximize this? Well, if we just pester the apothecary for five bajillion years, we can make things happen. And thus, we are making things happen. I actually wish that the game remembered the prices that I tried to haggle down to. That would save me a little bit of typing. Wouldn't be that much time, but every little bit of time makes a little bit of difference. I imagine this will, uh... While it will take a lot of time in real time, in the game, won't take that much. I do think, genuinely think, that we can do this whole thing in one day. I wonder what the Catter who are in this plaza think of what Derek is doing. Just see Derek popping out of the building, going straight back in, popping out a minute later, then going straight back in, over and over and over and over and over again. Indefinitely. Until the sun sets, and maybe even into the next day. It's not like we have an elemental to take care of. We do not. I accidentally bought some mana potions. Well, I have these now. Pills to magically restore your spellcasting abilities. You're carrying three. Oh boy, they're going straight in the box back in my, uh, back in my room. I did a silly. I knew it would happen at some point that I'd buy some of those. It's alright, they weren't that expensive. I can always go and do some training at night and literally fight two groups of jackal men to get the money back. I might actually do that. I might actually do that. When it gets too dark, fight a couple of jackal men, get the money back, and just have some mana pills. You know, just in case we end up with a friend who's a magician that needs some more mana. This will never happen. We are a solo adventurer. We do have people come along occasionally to help us, but they don't use our resources. They bring their own resources. At least I hope they will, because I won't have many mana pills for you, on account of my no magic. Yeah, the, the, the no magic thing is... Uh, a big problem sometimes, because some things can be sorted with magic very easily. It's like, oh, you have magical spells? Just fire off this spell and the problem is solved. But not, not Derek. 145, by the way. We're nearly halfway towards maximum communication. In fact, if we have time during the day, I might pop out and fight some brigands to get that money back. Again, I don't need the money. I really don't need the money. Like, what are we spending money on these days? What are we sp- I bought some health pills. Okay, health pills again, not the worst thing to buy. At least it's not mana pills. At least it's not mana pills. See, you've got to pay attention, or else you're accidentally- Ooh, that's gone down to 410. Um, you accidentally buy things you don't need. Like the mana pills. At least the health pills. 
I'll use them at some point. I will use them. Could always do with health pills. How many of those do we actually have right now? We have 16 and 18. Once we get to 200, I'm gonna buy some more stamina pills. Then I probably won't need to buy stamina pills forever. Anyway, pop back into here. And hey, I want to go do more haggling. Oh please. I'll I'll do anything. I'll I'll hire the greatest orators in the whole of Shapir to train you. Just let me do my work, Derek. Please. Please let me do my work. Also, remember to save. You don't want to lose all your progress by the game crashing. That is a good point, my friend. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Now, now that I've given you that advice, will you please leave me alone? No. Darn it. But I will save after this. I will save. And that's still at 16. Right. Let's save the game. Slot number 34. I wonder how many save slots we can have. 146. Yep. Four more points and we will be at halfway to maximum. Is it still? It's still mid-morning. Oh yeah, let's go! Straight back in, Derek! Straight back in! This is slower than it was in Krondor. This is quite a bit slower than it was in Krondor. Because you could literally just turn around and you were instantly in the interface. You didn't have to hand over your purse and then instigate this and type in the numbers. You just pressed haggle. But I don't think there's that much in it. I don't think there's that much in it. Yep, still 12. I could just do this for like the next 10 minutes and not look at our gains. Because I don't think you need to be looking at the gains for them to happen. That said, seeing the number go up is always a fun thing. It's always a fun thing. I do wonder how much time it takes to negotiate with the apothecary. How much time? Probably not much. Like every single action taking a little parcel of the day. This is all extra time, of course, that I have because we defeated the fire elemental so quickly. I think the next one will probably turn up on what? Day eight, if I were to guess. So we have multiple days to max out our communication. Multiple days. Who knows, by then maybe the Sultan will have figured out what we've done and give us a reward. That would be nice. I don't know who I'd go to to get that reward. Maybe Uhura or Rakish? They do know we're an adventurer, a hero, so we'd be quite likely to frequent the Adventurer's Guild. Eight dinars still, yep, that is not going down. Not yet. Has this gone down beyond 410? Nope, it has not. There doesn't appear to be any randomness in the lowest price that merchants will offer. I think it's all dependent on your skill. Nine dinars. And... 16! There we go! Back out we go, we'll strum a loot for a couple of hours, and then sell the barely functioning loot back to the store. Oh, wait, sorry, wrong game again. Wrong game again! There we go. Back here. The music is very calming in here. It's very, very calming. I quite like it. I know this isn't the music. Ooh, 405! That's gone down! That means we've gained more skill. This is still 12, though. Yeah, you could tell with the stamina and the oil because they're in 70s. Actually, be just the stamina pills because. Uh, this is such a low amount of 17s. It's the stamina pills that have such fine degrees of price change that you could visibly notice. That's a nice jacket you have there. Or is it a waistcoat? It's probably more like a waistcoat or a 
fancy shirt. Ah, I did not notice you come in. Let's get this over with. Ugh. Okay, if you at least cram this into one day, I can make up the work tomorrow, but you better buy some things after this. Oh, don't worry, I'll buy some pills afterwards. I'll buy some more stamina pills. Also, don't put it down to ten. We may get unlucky and something will happen and we could actually buy them at ten, and I don't want more of those. Like, anything else? Even oil. We might need oil someday. But magic pills? No. They'll literally just occupy that chest forever and do a grand total of nothing. They'll just take up space. It's like that thing that you have in that drawer that you know you're never, ever, ever going to use. You are never going to use that thing again. But you keep it anyway. If it's something tech-related, there's always that tiny fear that one day you'll get a thing and something in it won't work. Like the cable. It's always a cable that you end up having spare. You're like, ha ha! I still have this cable that should work. And then you plug it in and then it doesn't work because the cable is far more specific. It looks like it should work. But it in fact doesn't. The internals of the cable prevent it from working with this device that you can't have, you can't uh, use. And then you look at the cable and go, why did I even keep you? And I can't answer that question. But you did keep it. I'm guilty of this, I have so many random cables. One day they might be useful. One day. They will never, ever be useful. But I still keep them. I still keep them. And you do too! How are we doing on skills? 154! We are past the halfway mark. Very nice. Very, very nice. We're still going though! Ho ho! Back in we go, Derek! Back in we go. We could just do that and right click to get to this. That's what I should be doing. It will save me a bit of time. It'll save me a lot of time. I know you're not prepared to sell it to me for that price, but I still have to try. Four, two, two, four, oh, five. And then we go to three. This'll stop at twelve. I wonder how cheap they'll end up being. We could go to somewhere else and mix things up, but there is no store that we have access to right now that has this many things for sale. Five things! When the Fire Elemental was about, there were six things for sale. That said, we probably could only buy the incense once. Like, five things! It's such a huge amount of merchandise. So many things that you can haggle for. I mean, the Crondor stores have this place beat because they had absolutely loads of things. And if you take your time and sell every item and like look for every single coin, you can make so much money in that game, but it's not even funny. Like, the game tries to usher you to go right to Crondor to follow the plot and do exactly what's requested of you, but you know, and everyone knows, that it's an RPG. You go and do everything else that you can first. You move about, you talk to people, you find side quests, you engage in those side quests, you find completely optional dungeons. Like, Ultima 7 has every single one of the, uh, the dungeons. Each dungeon representing the opposite of a virtue. They're all there. Almost all of them are not important to the plot in Ultima 7. You go there just to fight monsters and get treasure. But they're there. And lots of people who played the previous games will go look for them and they'll be like, I want to go into this dungeon! And then they go check it out, they fight some headless and some enemies. Maybe they'll find a dragon in one of them and the reward will be magic stuff. And magic stuff's always good. 
Especially in that game, you really want to give everyone magic stuff. Because the magic stuff is cool. And it weighs a lot less, and it's really strong. Like, ideally, you want to have your entire party in Ultima 7 outfitted in magical gear by the end of it. A few of them don't really have the strength for it, but you can always improve their strength via trainers. You can always make them better. That said, by the time you've finished the main story of Ultima 7 and also done the Forge of Virtue, you are so powerful that you could just complete the game by yourself, what with your maxed out stats, double max strength, and having the uh, super amazing demon infused sword. You can just kill everything. Yeah, the game absolutely gave you the ability to make it as easy or as challenging for you as you like. I mean, if all else fails, you can always just make a uh, ladder of boxes up to the cheat room. Basically, the, uh, the debug area that was left in. Again, how could the developers have thought? The developers didn't think that people would go to that area, that people would find a way to make a ladder of boxes and get into a chimney which has all of the plot items you could ever want and full sets of magical gear and magical weapon, magical weapons, magical armor, reagents, spell scrolls. You could just immediately become absurdly powerful or just take a super powerful scythe and go right to the end of the game. I don't know if this game has that. It might. It is a Sierra game. They do sometimes put silly things in them. Understatement of the century, by the way. Sierra putting silly things in a video game. But they did. They certainly did. Okay, nine. Has this gone down in value or is this still 16? Uh, the answer is, it's still 16. Okay, first things first. It's still mid-morning. Second thing second. We're at 159 communication. We're getting there, but we're not yet done. We have 41 points left to gain. 41 points, and I think we can do it. I absolutely think we can do it. Maybe before midday ends. Possibly. It's more likely that it'll be mid-afternoon. More well, likely that it'll be mid-afternoon by the time we're done. It could be that the sun's setting, and then we spend a little bit of time out in the desert getting more money to make up for all the things I accidentally bought. That said, do I need to do that? I might do it just to make up for the, uh, the mana pills. How does a pill restore your magic? That is a question. Is it magic and in? Trin is a strange, ethereal thing. How do you condense magical energy into a pill that can be taken with a swig of water? The apothecary has many secrets. He might tell us them one day. But I get the feeling we'd have to be much better friends. And I'm not doing a good job of ingratiating myself with this man. I accidentally bought some more health pills. I did? I bought more health pills. Well, you know what? We're just going to keep those health pills. Just going to keep them. I'm going to keep doing that. Accidentally buying pills because I'm too busy talking. Not paying attention. Again, at least it was health pills. We need health pills. We were told, after all, that we need to make sure we have plenty of these if we ever go to Razia. We need to have plenty of them. Why not just overburden my entire inventory with them? It's not like we're going to be getting much else right now. I wonder if we can travel via the map when we are over encumbered. Maybe we'll find out when I accidentally buy way too many pills. We still... We still have 324 dinars, and this is after we have bought so many things. Oh? 
400 sim teams. Oh, that went down even further. Oh, that's a sign that we've gotten better. That's a sign that we've gotten better. That's now at 400. This, however, is still at 16. Every little bit, every bit of progress is inching us further forward. What is Derek doing? I don't quite know. Perhaps he's testing the hinges on the door? They are a little squeaky. Alright, let's reduce this down to three. No, you're not going down to seven, Dinars. Not yet. Note, by the way, that every time I accidentally buy them at the higher values, without me being attuned to communication, I am squandering money. Money that, realistically, we don't need anymore. Because seriously, what else am I going to buy apart from potions? Or pills, rather. Interchangeably mix them up. Keep forgetting, even as I'm negotiating for them, that this guy doesn't make potions. He makes pills. It's a good way to differentiate the uh, different items. Oh, what is it now, Derek? Really? Are we doing this again, Derek? Must we do this again, Derek? Can you at least accidentally say you're going to buy one of my things again? At full price, maybe. That would be nice, but no, you want to negotiate me down to 20% off on those, and then you decide not to buy them. Oh, really? It's a good thing you saved Shapir from the fire elemental, otherwise my patience would be a lot more thin. Let's just finish that off. Nope, I want to leave, and I want to head back out, head back in, and do it all again! Do 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 do! Negotiating with the apothecary for all their stuff. We're gonna haggle to the lowest price, and then we're gonna leave and start it all over again. Do 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 do! Haggling to raise our communication. Accidentally buying potions. It's not even a source of frustration. They're not even potions. Or lotions. They're pills. That you swill. With water. Yep, accidentally bought even more. Accidentally bought even more health pills. It's always the health pills, by the way. Always the health pills, the more expensive one. How many of those do I now have? 22. I also have 163 communication, I might add, and it's still mid-morning. Like, we could raise the amount of money we have to 400, that'd be great. But then again, we're probably, as I said before, going to get a reward from the Sultan at some point. It's quite likely. We got, a re we got rewards from the Baron, after all, in the first game. That'll probably make up for all the things that I'm buying now. Make up for all the things I'm buying. See, we're, we're very, very close. To it. Don't go to 400 there. If you go to 400 there, there's a good chance we'll accidentally buy it when they negotiate all the way down to the 400 point. You know, I could probably just put 400 in for those pills, and we get them. Okay, we'll reduce this down. 19, 18, 17, 16. I might actually just keep the amount of pills for each of these I have to 20. Like, 20 health pills, 20 stamina... No, 20 health pills, 30 stamina pills. That's probably enough pills. And maybe five or so of the poison ones. I'd say we don't really use the poison ones that often. Maybe three is fine. I shouldn't really be thinking about the, this, about it this hard, because again, when are we going to need to fight? I mean, I suppose if we have to do other things in the desert, we do have to go and help the woman who was turned into a tree. We do need to see if we can reverse that. That will involve going out to the desert, and there's danger there. 
danger for our opponents. Not for us. We are going to be absolutely fine. We, after all, have 200 in all of our combat skills and all attributes that are pertinent to combat. We are a master of combat. And soon we're about to be a master of talking to people. And also a master of annoying the apothecary. A lot. 460, 440, 420, 400, there we go. And every single time, it gets negotiated down. That is a tick of experience. So really, if every, if, so if every item was like the stamina pills, mind you they were all in 17s, we could get so many procs of experience. Imagine if Quest for Glory won and had the communication skill. That would have been another thing we'd have had to grind up. But it didn't. It didn't. It did have the problem that we didn't have a lot of money, though. Like the fact that we didn't have much money meant that we had to struggle a lot more. There was a lot more intermediate stuff we needed to do. Because... We had to get the money to pay for our room, to pay for food, to pay for potions as we slowly got a bit richer, and to pay for the training sessions with the Swordmaster. We weren't a well-established hero at that point. Now that we're just the hero of Spielberg and the slowly emerging hero of Shapir, we have a reputation that's giving us certain benefits. Like, one of the things that's making it's a lot easier to stop our money in this game is the fact that we don't need to pay for a room to sleep in. We also don't need to pay for food if we choose to eat at the Caddis Tail Inn. Now, you didn't have to really do that in Quest for Glory 1 if you knew where to look, but that did involve traveling about in the countryside, and there was danger involved in that. There was danger. It came with risk. Whereas here, there is a vast amount of area where you are completely safe. Like, the whole of the interior of the city is safe. Unless there's an elemental roaming about trying to kill everyone. But that doesn't happen very often. It's not an everyday occurrence that an elemental gets out and about and starts burning everything or flooding everything. This is very unusual. And it's probably got something to do with Razir. I get the feeling that the person in charge of Razir, at the moment, is doing things to try and destroy Shapir, and maybe the entire world as well. And that would be bad, because we live in this world, it's our home. We kind of don't want it to become no more. We kind of want it to keep being. So, 166 communication. It's still mid-morning. This is reminding me of the climbing session that we did. Where we just managed to get all of our climbing skill in one day. This is even faster, I think. It actually might not be faster. It's certainly less strenuous on poor Derek's body. Walking in and out of a building takes a lot less effort than climbing up a tree over and over and over and over and over again. It wasn't that expensive, though. I don't remember how many of those we used, but we didn't use that many stamina pills. And we had water readily available. That's probably why the dervish stays there. Ready supply of water, shade, food. I'm sure there's something there, like berries from some bushes or Things for the trees. Maybe I should ask the dervish what he eats. Maybe I should. That would involve me going to talk to the dervish as opposed to raising up my communication skill, though. Seven dinars. That's actually gone down. I'm pretty sure it was eight before. Oh, this has gone down. Look. Three, nine, five. Okay. 
Oh, now it's 11 dinars. So while we need more experience to gain more to gain the equivalent number of points, we're getting more haggling attempts. Because now we can push the health pills and we can push the oil down a little bit further. And that's going to help. It's going to help mitigate the increased experience we need. This, of course, is presuming that there is, in fact, more experience that you need to get these skill-ups. You might not need more. You might just need, you know, a set amount for each level. Again, I don't understand... I don't know the way that the game tracks this. Also, those are now down to 11. Those are still 9, though. So, you've got to be careful now, because this is at 15. So, if I look now, 169! And it's still mid-morning! You know, after this, we're going to go and have... Ah, oh, we can have some food over there once we're done. Getting pretty hungry. We're getting pretty hungry. We're probably not getting pretty hungry, but I'm still going to eat something. Working on haggling is tiring. It's very tiring. I don't know why I'm clicking there when really I should be just typing. Typing is so much faster. I'm very curious as to what the lowest price each of these things is. Very curious. We'll find out soon enough. Oh, we will find out soon enough. We will get that maximum. And then nothing will stop us from advancing time. Except maybe wanting to get a little bit of money. That would be nice. Get, getting a bit of money. But then again, earning money will cost us money because we'll have to buy pills to pay for all that. Because, after all, health and stamina is a resource. It's something we expend to earn money, in the hopes that we earn more money than we spend. Now, imagine, in truth, it's not a great way, because you'll be spending quite a bit. But you will be making profit. That is the way the game goes. Hey, if you don't have money to buy the thing that you need, you can get money. I wonder if you can get a loan from the money lender. You probably can't. The money changer. You probably can't. And considering the fact that they definitely work for the Thieves Guild, I don't think you'd want to. No, I really don't think you'd want to. All right, I'm back again. Now let's uh, do this. I note, by the way, the animation for the alchemy that he's doing, the, the animation for the making of pills and potions, is very good indeed. Like, he puts them down, and he reaches out to pick them up. Attention to detail was put in that animation. And it's a really good animation, really smooth animation. All the animations in this game are really smooth. A lot of effort was put into making this fan remake. And it shows. It's really, really great. 15. Our skills are now at 173. We only have 27 more points to get. And it's still mid-morning. Alright, Derek. We're almost to the three-quarters mark. We are almost there. Once we get to 175, it'll be the last stretch, the final hurdles towards skill mastery outside of intelligence that we are not going to be raising because we don't need that skill. We don't need that attribute. 12, 11. We should also probably put away the mana pills. We don't need them on us. Go down to 15. And then we'll just open this back up. 
And guess what, sir? I accidentally switched past the purse. Also, accidentally buying things will mean that we are carrying less stuff. Because the money weighs a lot. It weighs a lot. So it's now 390 semtines for those, which means that we have gained more points. We have gone past the threshold. I think we're now past 175. I think we're now past 175. There we go. If we check. Yep, 176. No, by the way, you could do this right at the beginning of the game. You could go into the apothecary, day one, spend part of the morning maxing out this skill. Technically, you could do it right at the beginning in the gate plaza. Because there are merchants there. You could go around and negotiate with all of them and just immediately get to 200 communication. Honestly, that might be one of the skills if I were to play the game again that I would work on first. Because it saves you so much money in the long run, because you're now spending less money on everything else. Which means that your money goes further, and at the beginning of the game, you really want your money to go further. Like, being at 200 communication and buying that better sword, you could save quite a few dinars. You could save a lot of dinars. Hello, I'm back! I need to negotiate with you! What I'm negotiating for is not your pills, but better communication. I'm communicating to you my desire to improve my skills. You are communicating to me your desire for me to go away so that you could work, but I am insistent. I will not go. Not yet. Okay, 17, 16... 15. Have we gained more skill? Yep. 170. 178. So, we need to get 22 more points. 22 points. Let's do it. You did indeed notice me come in. At this point, you're considering just removing the door so that I can walk in without constantly opening and closing the door. That's what you're thinking. You are considering it. You are really considering it. 14, 13, 12, 11. These should stop at 9. And this should stop at 15. 18, 17, 16, 15. So doing that gets me to 179. So in theory, if I do this another 21 times, it will get me to 200. In theory. I don't know if that's actually what's going to happen. We could test. I'm not going to keep track, though. I'll inevitably lose count. So instead, I'm just going to check periodically and see... Basically, whenever that number for the stamina pills goes down, I'll know that I've gained some points. I'll know I've gained points. It's a good way to track it. In a way, you'll never have to pay full price for any of the items, because you always start with some communication skill. I don't know what stats and attribute... I don't know what attributes it uses to determine your starting communication skill. I imagine if you're a wizard, you might start with higher communication. Maybe. I don't know. Or a hybrid class, of course. I know I keep talking about wizards and thieves and fighters, but you can always be a hybrid class. You could always combine two of the three professions, or you could combine all of them. You could decide that you're a fighter, mage, thief. 
Much like in DD, of course, you are gaining your skills generally in a slower at a slower rate because you have to focus on so many of them. But the reward is that you are truly versatile. You can spend. You have so many different ways to deal with a problem. You can pick and choose which way is best. And nobody's going to take you by surprise with a skill set that they think you don't have because you haven't. And if you become a paladin, well, you then have everything. You're a paladin, wizard thief. That said, being a paladin thief is probably quite hard on account of the no honor. Probably very difficult to become a paladin thief. Not impossible, though, I'd imagine. Not impossible. Just have to be very careful. Make sure you don't get caught. Make sure you do certain things that are deemed honorable, while at the same time doing lots of things that aren't. I wonder where the apothecary sleeps. Doesn't seem like there's a way out of this place, out of this room to somewhere else, so... Then again, it could be off-camera. Oh? Oh, has this gone down? Ooh, 385, it's gone down! It's gone down! Which means we're getting even better bargains! I wonder if at the end, the best price we could get is 350 centines. Might be the case. Okay, what are we at now? 185! Oh, that is much more than I thought we'd have. That's really good! Alright, it is still mid-morning, I might add. We started at dawn. It's mid-morning. It's not even hit midday. It's not even hit midday yet. Come on, sir. There's not much more for us to do. We're nearly there. We're nearly there. I only need 15 more points. There we go, 385, that's a huge discount. It's very impressive. Can we reduce these to 10? Actually, uh, 8, rather. We can reduce these to 9. I, I'm, I'm mixing up my numbers. I've been seeing so many numbers pass by on the screen that, uh... Yeah, we are... It's all getting a bit befuddled in my head, but we're almost there. Soon, skill gains will be a thing of the past, at least in this game. The skill gains never truly end. They, they never truly end. Well, there'll be Quest for Glory 3, where the maximum is 300. And there'll be Quest for Glory 4, and Quest for Glory 5, which wasn't the success that Sierra hoped it would be. There are a number of things working against Quest for Glory 5. One of those things is the graphic style they went with, because it's got a lot of really early era 3D with flat 2D backgrounds that aren't as pretty as the backgrounds we have here. I think if they'd have stuck with 2D, it would have generally been a much better game. It would have been a much prettier game. It would have aged better. Like, really good 2D animation ages far better than 3D animation from that era. Like, you could probably remember some really rough 3D animation from that time. It was a time of experimentation with graphics and seeing just what can be accomplished with 3D. The same happened for 2D. We're always learning, always gaining new skills and figuring out new tricks. There are some amazing games from back then where literal wizardry seems to be being performed. There is a Mega Drive game that at the beginning it says this game has examples of all of this running on native hardware. I'm trying to remember what that game is called. It is a 
marvel of like technological achievement that they managed to get all this going. And the same happened with the PlayStation as well. But when I think of point-and-click adventure games, I think a lot of the time of 2D adventure games. You think about things like Space Quest 4, you think about King's Quest 5 and 6, you think about the later Quest for Glory games, you think about Karandia 2, you think about Flight of the Amazon Queen, Indiana Jones and the Fate of Atlantis that I've not played yet, you think of The Dig! Oh, so many beautiful looking games. And there are 3D games. You think of Discworld 1 and 2 as well. But uh, there are 3D point and click adventure games that also look really nice. Like, Grim Fandango is a brilliant looking game. It has a, a great artistic style that really works to how the 3D is done. Like, it, it really plays to its strengths. And then you have Quest for Glory 5. And you have King's Quest 9. I, I, I remember King's Quest 9. Yeah, that, that was a thing. Wasn't very King's Quest either compared to uh, the other entries in the series. Not many people talk about King's Quest 9. Now... It was unfortunately the last in the mainline series. There was the more recent King's Quest game. Which I played. Just called King's Quest. And it was beautiful. And it was brilliant. And I really, really enjoyed it. It was a incredibly fun experience. Wonderful voice cast. Great plot. Great puzzles. Very fun. Absolutely love it. Wholeheartedly recommend it if you like King's Quest. Maybe one day I'll play it on my channel. I, I don't know. Maybe I will. I have to play some of the other King's Quest games first, though. Oh boy. King's Quest 5 and King's Quest 6. Oh, King's Quest 6 is an experience. It is absolutely an experience. A wonderful experience. You know what I haven't done for a while? Accidentally bought any pills. Alright, what's my skill at now? 193! 193! Only 7 more- I should save. Why haven't I saved all this time? I don't know! I should've! We only need seven more points. That's it. That's all we need. Seven more points. Nearly done. Nearly done. No, no, don't make it 399. We'd actually buy it at one point. 380. Okay, it's gone down even further. Maybe it won't be 350 at the end. Maybe it won't be 350. Maybe it'll be 370 at the end. I'll take it, though. I'll definitely take buying them for 370. This goes down to 15. So if we have a look here. 193. Yep. 193. Look at all those 200s. So many 200s there. We're about to have one more. Come on, Derek. One more. We can do it. We can do it! The final stretch, the last hurdle, the most final of final challenges, going through this menu a couple more times. And by a couple more times, I mean a lot of times, but we are going to do it. We are almost there. So very, very almost there. Just a little what an achievement it will be. And it's only day six. 
we have to be in Shapir for at least another nine days. But don't worry, folks. Things will happen to take up our time. Things will happen. There will be more elementals, and there'll be other quests. I really wish that there were quests that appeared a lot earlier in the game, but it's better late than never. Better late than never. There we go. Dealt with that one. Now this one. Yep, 380. No, oh, no, don't make it 30. We could, we could probably pay so much more for things. I don't want to do that. I've already bought some things accidentally. I think I bought two sets of health potions and one set of mana pills. This still isn't at 14. Oh, we don't need oil. At least I don't think we need oil. This is when you actually need oil. Okay. Let's do this. Yeah, you didn't notice we come in. That is true. You didn't. Right. So. Do this. And that to that. And this here. Get to 380. Still 380. So we haven't gained enough skill to lower it down. But I bet we've gained some skill. I bet we've gained some. All right, 19, 18, 17, 16, 15. Are we now at like 195? Whoa, we're at 198. We're at 198. Okay, we now need to check after every single time we do this. We need to check after every single time. Because we could get to 200 after this next haggling session. We gain these skills really quickly. Like, really quickly. So much faster than I thought we would. So much faster. Right, that's still going down. 380. So I think it's going to be 375 at the end. I think it's going to be 375 for those pills. 11 dinars. Goes down to 9. And 15. Okay, let's check. 200? No, still at 198. We have to check after every single time now. Because we don't want to do this any more times than we have to. Oh, if only I'd have done this so much sooner. If only I'd have done this sooner. If only every time I came here, I'd have done a haggling mini montage of like two or three haggle attempts. Could have done this faster. Well, we would have done it faster. We would have done it spaced out a little more. 380. Still not down to 200. Still not down another 5. Then again, there's no guarantee it actually will go down another 5. Alright, last your price is 9. Okay, so. And yours is 15. Right, 200. There we go! We've done it! Ha ha! 200 communication! Finally! How many of these do we have? 18. So we could buy... Four... Lumps of them. So let's do that. Let's go out. Then let's go back in. And we'll buy... You know, we'll buy five. We'll buy five sets of pills. We can afford it in our... We can carry them, I presume. Yeah, our carry capacity's great. So, let's get the money out and let's actually buy some things. Look, I've had it up to here with you. Are you going to buy my stuff or are you not? Are you going to buy it? How about 375 for 5? Finally! Oh, that'll make up for all of the time you've wasted. Am I forgiven? Yes, you're forgiven. Do you mean that? No, not really. But you did just give me a lot of money, and I appreciate that. Now please get out of my store. It's midday. I'd like some food. And I would like to get some food as well. As promised, I'm gonna buy something from you. Hello! I wish to purchase 
one of these, and I will ask for forty semtines. May you be much the better for it. May it please you well. The falafels are quite tasty. Excellent! Let's also fill our water skins. Fill your water skins with cool, clear water from the fountain. And when we come back, folks, it is midday. A day six. And we have maxed out our communication. That's it. 200 strength, 200 agility, vitality, luck, 147 intelligence, and 200 in weapon use, parry, dodge, throwing, climbing, and communication. We don't need any more skill improvements. That's it. We're done. We are done. And when we return, we might do some things to get a bit more money. But do we need to? Do we? I don't know. I'll have to think about it. We could buy some rations. How many rations do we have, actually? Uh, seven. You know what? We could maybe buy some rations from you. Uh, you don't actually sell rations. Do you sell rations? You... Oh, you sell Saurus on a stick! And a bumper sticker. A bumper sticker? Ah! Now, here's the thing. If I drop some money on the floor, if I drop one dinar, you part your ways with... You part ways with some of your hard-earned funds. You now have... 297 dinars of 555 centines left. If I now try and buy things from you, that now becomes a signed game box. And I want that. So let's see if we can negotiate it down. May it bring you entertainment and enjoyment. Oh, -ho! look what it is. I'm going to save first. I'm going to save first. It is a... It's an original Trial by Fire game box, and it's signed by Slurry and Scree. The weight of the box is 10 quarks. Oh, you wanna bet we're gonna put this in our room? This is a collector's item! Welcome, hero. Thank you very much! Now, depending on if you have an odd or even number of dinars in your inventory, that item will change. Let us put this on display. Where are we gonna put it? You give the box a place near the storage chest. You wonder if this will ever become a collector's item. I'm sure it will. While the box is merely a creation of cardboard, you feel like this may someday be a valuable collector's item. I'm sure it will. Right. Put this away. You put the mana pill in the chest. Put the mana pill in the chest. Put the mana pill in the chest. And there we go. Oh, we might as well also put this in the chest too. Our inventory is nice and clean. Do I need this feather right now? It's not very heavy, I don't think. Yeah, it weighs one quark. We can easily keep that. And when we come back, folks, we have got max communication. And what will we do with the rest of our day? I don't know. Welcome, hero. Thank you. We might just chill out and relax and let time pass. We might just do that. Maybe we'll go to day seven and see what souvenirs we can get for our room. That's not a bad idea. And if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe if you're not. And if you are subscribed, press that bell for those notifications. And I'll catch you next time, folks. And I'll see you then. Later.